Hi learners, I hope you're all doing fine today. Welcome to another video lesson for our course, Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. Today, we are going to learn about death and the meaning of life. In our previous lessons, we learned about the human person and society, particularly how human beings are influenced by people around them, the environment, events, and other factors that have shaped and influenced one's life and experiences. Today, we are going to learn about death as the ultimate end of the human person and try to evaluate how we perceive life, the meaning of life. At the end of this video lesson, you shall be able to reflect and enumerate your life objectives or goals you want to achieve and try to define and reflect on the meaning of your life and identify where it leads you. Alright, so let's begin. One might ask, we will all die, so what then is the purpose of having an education? Owning and managing a business? Have a beautiful home with a lovely family? What's the point of doing what we are doing today? How will you answer this question? If you are a Catholic, you might hold on to the belief that there is life after death and that you will reap what you saw during your earthly life. This idea then influences you to live your life purposely, such as giving a hand to others in need, paying attention to your actions, being mindful of your words, respect, and other traits that strongly define your existence as human being. Similarly to Hindus, they believe in the laws of karma. When someone dies, the soul will be reincarnated into a different form depending on what the person did during his or her life. This will continue until the person reaches moksha, a state where the person will be completely liberated from samsara or the cycle of life and death. On the other hand, if you are a materialist like Democritus, who believes that there is no special meaning of life and life is other than living today, this perspective is rooted in materialistic philosophy that all things in this universe are made of atoms and soon will disintegrate into air. You see, people have different interpretations and rationalizations about life, and we cannot say that one is above and more reasonable than the other. There's nothing wrong if one anchors his or her life on religious belief or to be a materialist, so long as you remain open to uncertainties. The task of philosophy is not to provide another answer to what happens with life after death, but to ask what is the meaning of life in the face of, us, in the face of uncertainty such as death. We previously discussed that as human beings, one of our limitations is spatial temporal. Because of our physical bodies, we are limited to time and space. We, can li we cannot live forever. Eventually, our bodies will start to weaken maybe because of old age, sickness, accidents, or other factors that will lead us to our ends. Death, as described by science, is the stop of bodily functions that signals the end of a person's life. In the context of religion, death is the separation of the body and the spirit, which for the Catholics and other Christian denominations, the spirit will enter the kingdom of heaven or suffer in hell. Nevertheless, our lives as human beings are like the sunset depicted in the picture. Like the sun that reaches its sunset, man will only reach its end. Man will surely reach its end, rather. No matter how the day went, good or bad, it will always come to an end. And it is part of our life as human beings. Sabi nga nila, at the end of the day, we are all passers of this earth. But of course, by realizing that, we should not be stressed about it. We should not be worry warts. Instead, we should engage ourselves in activities and make our lives worthwhile. How can we do that? How should we live our lives? As a human being, we are given freedom. Remember, we have physical, psychological, and moral freedom. With this, we can choose and act for ourselves, also known as self-determination. This means that if we want to achieve something, it's dependent on us. If you want to grow mentally, to improve your quality of life, whatever your goal is, 
it lies in your own hands with your decisions and actions. As a human being, we can determine our path, make plans, execute them, succeed, and learn from our mistakes to be the best version of ourselves. With this, let me ask you, what about your objectives in life? What are your objectives? What motivates you to do what you are doing? How are you living your life? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? What are your goals for yourself? To be a successful businessman, a doctor, a psychologist, teacher, pilot, an army? By now, you should already have a goal for your life. What about your family, your education, your future career? The answer to these questions lies in you. Like what I've said, self-determination and flourishing are dependent on your actions and decisions. Thus, we should not only live to exist, we have to have a goal to define our existence. In philosophy, happiness and sufferings give meaning to our lives. Happiness is the state of being satisfied or fulfilled or an emotional state of joy. This emotion surfaces when you pass an exam, when you achieve a goal you set, or just having fun. For example, to own the latest cell phone, you save your allowance. Manny Pacquiao is a, success Manny Pacquiao is a successful athlete because of his dedication, perseverance, and faith. Now, he is reaping the fruit of his labor and sacrifices. To attain a state of happiness, in the scenarios I've mentioned, it is not a walk in the park. It comes with great sacrifice, discipline, and hard work, which then make our lives meaningful. That we do not just exist to eat and sleep. Setting up goals and achieving them makes our lives worthwhile. Sabi nga ni Aristotle, happiness is the ultimate goal of life. But what does it mean? Aristotle believes that all human beings are composed of means and ends. Let's say your end is to drink water because you are thirsty. The means will be a, the means will be all those actions that you carry out to satisfy that need. Since happiness is our ultimate end or goal, we exert effort to achieve it, which eventually defines our life. Alongside happiness is suffering. Suffering is a state of distress and hardship, such as poverty, illness, emotional pain, and other sources of hardship which have an impact in our existence. Through pain or suffering, we become stronger and wiser in our decisions and actions. We develop a sense of determination over our difficulties to eventually be the best version of ourselves. By pursuing happiness and good things, we make our lives worthwhile and when we succeed in achieving goals despite the hardships it goes along with, the sweeter the success is. Now, I want you to ponder on these philosophical questions. What is life and what is the meaning of your life and where does it lead you? I hope you come up with your answers with these questions all right so thank you for watching this video lesson i hope you learned something i'll see you again next time bye bye